Franklin D. Roosevelt, January 30, 1882 to April 12, 1945. Who was Franklin D. Roosevelt? Franklin Delano Roosevelt was the 32nd President of the United States. FDR, as he was commonly referred to, led the United States through the Great Depression and World War II, while significantly expanding the federal government's powers through the New Deal. Roosevelt, who contracted polio in 1921, spent the majority of his adult life in a wheelchair. Due to FDR's unusual four terms in office, an entire generation of Americans grew up not knowing any other president. Roosevelt's social programs reimagined the role of government in the lives of Americans, while his presidency during World War II established U.S. preeminence on the international scene. Childhood and education Roosevelt was born in Hyde Park, New York, on January 30, 1882. As the sole child of James Roosevelt and Sarah Ann Delano Roosevelt and a distant relative of President Theodore Roosevelt, he was born into a rich family. The Roosevelts had been distinguished for several generations, having amassed a wealth in real estate and commerce, and they resided at Springwood, their home in New York's Hudson River Valley. Roosevelt was surrounded by affluence and a sense of self-importance as he grew up. Up to the age of 14, he was schooled by tutors and governesses, and the entire home revolved around him, with his mother remaining the most influential character in his life even as an adult. His upbringing was vastly different from the common folk he would later support. In 1896, Roosevelt attended the famous Episcopal Preparatory School Groton School for Boys in Massachusetts. It was a difficult experience for him because he did not fit in with the other kids. In athletics, Groton men thrived whereas Roosevelt men did not. He took to heart the principles of Groton's headmaster, Endicott Peabody, who encouraged students to assist the less fortunate through civic service. After graduating from Groton in 1900, Roosevelt enrolled at Harvard University with the intent to succeed. Even though he was just a C student, he was a member of the Alpha Delta Phi fraternity, the editor of the Harvard Crimson newspaper, and he graduated in three years. The prevailing view among his peers, however, was that he was unimpressive and ordinary. In 1907, Roosevelt passed the bar examination without receiving a degree from Columbia University Law School, where he had studied law. He practiced business law in New York for the following three years, living a normal upper-class lifestyle. However, Roosevelt found the practice of law tedious and limiting. He focused his sights on achieving greater success. Wedlock with Eleanor Roosevelt On March 17, 1905, Roosevelt wed Eleanor Roosevelt, his fifth cousin and Theodore Roosevelt's niece. During Roosevelt's final year at Harvard, the couple became engaged. Franklin and Eleanor had six children, including Anna, James, Franklin, who died as an infant, Elliot, Franklin Jr., and John. With the exception of John, who selected a business career, all of the Roosevelt children pursued careers in politics and public service. New York State Legislature Roosevelt was invited to run for the New York State Senate at age 28 in 1910. In a district that had voted Republican for the preceding 32 years, he ran as a Democrat. In a Democratic landslide, he gained the seat through arduous campaigning and the help of his name. As a state senator in New York, Roosevelt fought against elements of the Democratic political machine. This earned him the ire of party leaders, but national exposure and significant experience in political intrigue and strategy. During this time, he developed an alliance with Lewis Howe, who would have a profound influence on his political career for the next quarter century. Roosevelt was re-elected to the state senate in 1912 and served as the Agricultural Committee's chair, passing farm and labor legislation and social welfare initiatives. Roosevelt supported Woodrow Wilson at the 1912 National Democratic Convention and was rewarded with an appointment as Assistant Secretary of the Navy, the same position Theodore Roosevelt had used to propel himself to the presidency. Roosevelt was a vigorous and effective administrator. He specialized in business operations, worked with Congress to approve budgets and modernize systems, and formed the United States Naval Reserve. However, he was restless in his position as second chair to Secretary of the Navy Josephus Daniels who was less passionate about backing a large, effective naval force. Domestic politics In 1914, Roosevelt chose to run for the New York U.S. Senate seat. As he lacked White House support, the proposal was doomed from the beginning. To pass his social programs and assure his re-election, President Wilson needed the Democratic political machine. Roosevelt had made too many political enemies among New York's Democrats for him to back him. Roosevelt was decisively defeated in the primary election and he learned a vital lesson. 
national prominence cannot defeat a well-organized local political organization. Despite this, Roosevelt entered Washington politics and saw his career flourish as he built more personal contacts. At the 1920 Democratic Convention, he accepted the nomination as James M. Cox's running mate for vice president. The pair was heavily beaten in the general election by Republican Warren G. Harding, but the event gained Roosevelt national exposure. Roosevelt mended his ties with the Democratic political machine in New York. He appeared at the 1924 and 1928 Democratic National Conventions to nominate New York Governor Al Smith for president, therefore expanding his national visibility. Obsession with Lucy Mercer in 1914, Roosevelt's association with Lucy Mercer, his wife's social secretary, grew into a romantic one. Eleanor issued Franklin an ultimatum in 1918 when she discovered the affair, cease visiting Lucy or she would file for divorce. Roosevelt decided to end his romantic relationship with Mercer, but resumed covertly meeting him again years later. In reality, she was present at the time of his passing. Polio and disability Roosevelt was diagnosed with polio in 1921, at the age of 39, while on vacation on Campobello Island, New Brunswick, Canada. Roosevelt first refused to believe that he was permanently disabled and sought a cure through several therapies in the purchase of the Warm Springs Resort in Georgia. Despite his attempts, he was never able to use his legs again. Later, he formed a charitable foundation in Warm Springs and initiated the March of Dimes Initiative, which ultimately sponsored an effective polio vaccine. Warm Springs' Little White House is now a Georgia State Park and National Historic Landmark. Roosevelt was first resigned to his fate as a polio victim, believing his political career to be gone. However, his wife Eleanor and political advisor Lewis Howe persuaded him to persevere. Roosevelt attempted to improve his physical and political image during the subsequent years. He trained himself to walk short distances while wearing his braces. And he was careful not to be spotted using his wheelchair in public. New York State Governor in 1928, Al Smith, the departing governor of New York, urged Roosevelt to run for his office. Roosevelt's triumph gave him confidence that his political star was ascending. As governor, FDR implemented a variety of new social programs and advocated for progressive government. Presidential elections after the 1929 stock market crash, Republicans were held responsible for the Great Depression. Roosevelt launched his presidential campaign by advocating for government intervention in the economy to give relief, recovery, and change. In November 1932, his optimistic, positive attitude and personal charisma helped him upset incumbent Republican Herbert Hoover. When FDR ran for a second term in 1936, he was re-elected in a landslide over the Kansas governor, Alfred M. Alf. Landon, on November 3, 1936. Early in 1940, Roosevelt had not publicly declared his intention to run for a record-breaking third term. Privately, however, in the midst of World War II, with Germany's successes in Europe and Japan's expanding power in Asia, FDR believed that only he had the expertise and talents to lead the United States in such difficult circumstances. At the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Roosevelt defeated all of his opponents and was nominated. In November 1940, he defeated the Republican Wendell Wilkie to win the presidency. As the conclusion of FDR's third term as president drew near, the United States was fully immersed in war, and his candidacy for a fourth term was unquestionable. Roosevelt chose Missouri Senator Harry S. Truman as his running mate, and together they defeated Republican contender Thomas E. Dewey and won 36 of the 48 states in the 1944 presidential election. On March 12, 1933, only eight days after becoming office for the first time, Roosevelt launched the first of more than 30 fireside talks. The sincere and approachable remarks, broadcast live on the radio from the White House, were an effective strategy for rallying American support for FDR's New Deal and World War II programs. This is the New Deal. In his first 100 days in office following his inauguration in March 1933, Roosevelt advocated for a New Deal for the American people, proposing extensive economic reforms to combat the Great Depression. 13 million Americans were unemployed and hundreds of institutions closed during the largest economic crisis in American history since the Civil War. To stop the run on deposits, Roosevelt ordered the temporary closure of all banks. He formed a brain trust of economic advisors who designed alphabet agencies, such as the AAA, Agricultural Adjustment Administration, which supported farm prices by reducing agricultural production through subsidies, the CCC, Civilian Conservation Corps, 
which employed young unmarried men to restore public lands and national parks, and the NRA, National Recovery Administration, which regulated wages and prices. Other organizations guaranteed bank deposits, regulated the stock market, subsidized mortgages, and offered unemployment assistance. By 1936, the U.S. economy had signs of improvement. The gross national product had increased by 34 percent, and unemployment had decreased from 25 percent to 14 percent. However, FDR was criticized for increased government expenditure, imbalanced budgets, and what some saw as a shift toward socialism. The Supreme Court deemed numerous New Deal statutes illegal towards the middle of the 1930s. Roosevelt replied by proposing to load the court with pro-reform justices. Numerous members of Congress, including some Democrats, opposed the proposal. In 1938, poor press, a sluggish economy, and Republican gains in midterm elections effectively destroyed Roosevelt's ability to pass additional reform measures. Foreign policy in 1933 FDR departed from the Monroe Doctrine's unilateral concept and launched the good neighbor policy with Latin America. Since the end of World War I, the United States had maintained an isolationist foreign policy, and in the early 1930s, Congress approved the Neutrality Acts to prevent American involvement in foreign conflicts. However, as armed confrontations arose in Asia and Europe, Roosevelt attempted to aid China in her war against Japan and designated France and Great Britain to be the United States' first line of defense, against Nazi Germany. Second World War in 1940, Roosevelt initiated a series of actions to aid France and Britain in their defense against Nazi aggression during World War II. These efforts included the Lend-Lease Pact, which Congress ratified as the Lend-Lease Act in 1941. Early in 1941, with war raging in Europe, FDR pushed for U.S. industries to become an arsenal of democracy, for the Allies, France, Britain, and Russia. As Americans understood more about the atrocities of the war, their isolationism faded. Roosevelt seized the opportunity and stood hard against Germany, Italy, and Japan, the Axis powers. Congress enlarged the army and navy and accelerated the flow of supplies to the Allies with bipartisan support. With the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, all prospects of keeping the United States out of the war were dashed. Japanese incarceration. Within a few months of declaring war, President Roosevelt issued Executive Order 9066, mandating that all individuals of Japanese descent leave the West Coast. As a result, 120,000 individuals, including many American citizens, were transferred to inland detention camps. Oddly, this edict did not apply to Hawaii, where one-third of the population was of Japanese origin, nor to Americans of Italian or German ancestry residing in the United States. On the West Coast, nearly all Japanese Americans were forced to abandon their jobs and sell their homes and businesses at a substantial loss. Families were allowed only a few days to abandon their homes and communities in order to be taken to internment camps, which upended their entire social structure. Chief of Operations During World War II, Roosevelt was commander-in-chief who collaborated with and was occasionally surrounded by his military advisors. First in North Africa in November 1942, then Sicily and Italy in 1943, and finally the D-Day invasion of Europe in 1944, he helped design a strategy for conquering Germany in Europe through a series of invasions. Allied armies simultaneously defeated Japan in Asia and the Eastern Pacific. During this time period, Roosevelt advocated for the establishment of the United Nations. In February of 1945, Roosevelt met with British Prime Minister Winston Churchill and Soviet General Secretary Joseph Stalin to discuss post-war reconstruction at the Yalta Conference. He subsequently returned to the United States and the Warm Springs, Georgia Refuge. Death. Roosevelt died on the afternoon of April 12, 1945, due to a major brain hemorrhage. In March 1944, Hospital testing revealed that he had atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, and congestive heart failure due to the stress of World War II. Two cousins, Laura Delano and Margaret Suckley, as well as his old mistress Lucy Mercer Rutherford, by then a widow, were by Roosevelt's side upon his death. Vice President Harry S. Truman was summoned to the White House within hours of Roosevelt's death to take the oath of office. The untimely passing of FDR rocked the American populace to its core. Although many had observed that he appeared fatigued in images and newsreels, no one appeared to have anticipated his passing. Legacy 
Roosevelt is often named alongside George Washington and Abraham Lincoln in the annals of American history as one of the nation's finest presidents. His enduring achievements or his leadership and fortitude during the hardest years of the Great Depression and World War II. According to one biographer, he arose from his wheelchair to raise the nation from its knees. Thank you for watching Biographer. If you enjoy this video, please to like it and subscribe so you don't miss any of our video. Subscribe now.